Oh my gosh. Welcome back. Tyler's real fishing. <laughs> it's been a minute. That is right, boys and girls. We are out here today on Lake Travis. Today is a special, special episode where I get to break in my brand new boat, the Black Pearl. Yeah, I, I named it without telling anybody. <laughs> This here is my 2019 Skeeter FX20. If you guys missed the video of me going to the Skeeter factory to pick it up, make sure you guys click up here in this corner. But I'm out here today with Austin Ellis, Wayne Fig, and my buddy Michael Easterling to take some good photos today. And uh, I'm excited. I'm going to show you guys the whole process of what it looks like to... One sec, there's some stuff in my lens. And of course, have some fun along the way. We're going to do a little Q&A. We're going to play some rock, paper, scissors and play on our phones. I don't know. It's going to be a long day. Hopefully we'll be able to catch a few fish for you guys as well. That is the plan. But the biggest plan I'd say is to break in the new boat. The boat break in process is interesting because you can't just get your brand new boat, put it on the water and go flying down the lake. You have to go slower than faster than slower than faster for like 10 hours in order to uh, get the engine primed. So we'll see you guys on the water. Moment of truth, folks. Will the engine start? I hope so. Paid some money for this engine. All right, stop. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. Just gotta give some gas. Low oil pressure has oil. It has oil. Pump it. Pump it, pump it again? Okay. Gotta pump the bulb, they say. Oh, it's it's got gas in it now. Let's see. Oh ah. ho ho. Woo! I'm not touching nothing. My hands are off. Hands up, don't shoot. Heck yeah, brothers, sisters, cousins, mothers. Oh. All right, so let the break-in process begin. So there goes Austin, and uh, we are beginning our idle process. All right, so I'm going to press this button down here on my the right side of my dash. It's going to tell me how much water pressure I have, how many battery voltage, how many hours in the engine, fuel level and rate, what kind of miles per gallon I'm getting, uh, trim position, all that jazz. So I'm gonna go all the way to engine hours. So we're at 0.3 hours on the engine right now, which means uh, this engine hasn't gone very far. It had 0.2 hours coming from the factory. So that means we have to, in the first hour of running the engine hours in like 60 minutes, we have to do 15 minutes of idle speed. This is Alton Jr. is telling me all this information. 15 minutes of idle speed, then the rest of that hour, nothing over 3000 RPM. So we should idle, I'd say a little bit faster for 15 minutes and then the rest of the hour, so all the way until 1.2, will go nothing over 3,000 RPMs, and then we'll tell you guys more about it later. And I brought along a special guest today. Introduce yourself, they don't remember who you are. <laughs> oh gosh. What's up, y'all? Michael, uh, I live in Waco, but I'm a photographer. Yeet. Oh. How are you famous on the channel? How am I, fa oh. We uh, Gave Tyler the bright idea of doing the fish room, fishy vid video game. What is it called? I don't even know. It was the fishing video game. Lunker, uh, Lunker Bass Fishing. That's what it is. <laughs> what was your cameo? And uh, I sneezed <laughs> like 30 seconds into the video on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure and take your Zyrtec, people. But he's going to be out there today taking some photos of me and the rig. But of course, for the next 10 minutes, we're just going to be doing this, just chilling. Nope, nope, you're, get out of here. <laughs> All right, well, we have finished the first hour of breaking in the engine. We've been running for an hour now. Michael's pretty cold. <laughs> He's been without a dual console. Uh, the passenger is a little bit more chilly than the driver is. And I've got a, a 16 inch screen to hide behind. But uh, we went, basically the, the procedure is, there's a procedure that Yamaha tells you in the manual, and then there's every procedure that everybody on the, on the street tells you. And so I've had guys that are telling me, all right, never run it under, 
or over 40 miles an hour for the first month. And then I have guys that tell me, man, blow that sucker wide open from the gate. And so I try to take a mixture of everything that I hear and the Yamaha manual. And so what I'm doing, I'm not saying this is the best way, but it's what my pro buddies do. And what I'm doing is the first hour is under 3000 RPMs, second hour under 4000, I believe it could be wrong. And the reason why I'm trusting him is because he has the exact same boat every year. So he knows how to break in the engine well. Uh, second hour, nothing over 4,000. Third hour, nothing over 5,000. So every hour we're gonna take a break and uh, do some fishing. Just to, you know, have some fun. Michael is always over here shooting the photos. So I'll let him fish a little bit. And, and yeah, it's been a good time. We were, we were driving quite a while, an hour, like I said. And so we had some time to kill. So we listened to some Bluetooth audio. So we've been jamming to that, some Christmas jams. Michael's been cold, but you know what? I see it's time we hop on. We gotta try out the front electronics, we gotta try out the trolling motor, finally got the Minn Kota Ultrex, and I think I'm gonna chunk around an A-Rig for a little bit while Michael throws around a square bill or a fluke, and we'll see you guys when we catch some fish, maybe, we'll see. Moment of truth, we're gonna turn the trolling motor on, we're gonna give a little bit of power, and we're gonna lift this, so, oh, you can't, you, boom, trolling motor is down. This is a little twisted here, gotta figure out how to untwist the trolling motor cable. Oh, baby. We are cooking with gas. So the cool thing about the old tracks, look at that. It is it is uh, electric, not cable steering. Oh, beautiful. Let's take that sucker on five and get us going down the lake. And there we go, the first fish in the black pearl. Not a big one, but you know what? Beautiful Lake Travis largemouth bass. Hopefully this lake keeps getting better and better and uh, we'll see this guy in the future. What do you got to say to the fans, Ty? I got to say thank you. I got to say konnichiwa. <laughs> right, y'all, so I'm just going to try this vlog out real quick. <clears throat> I haven't caught a fish yet. I've been fishing for 12 minutes, so it's all good. It's fine. All right, I'm just realizing I don't think I filmed that catch. <laughs> really? Thought that I had, I thought I had my GoPro running, but I guess not. So we will see in editing if I had that catch. But you know what? I was throwing the Alabama rig, had my trolling motor on high, just threw it against the bluff wall and uh, got me uh, my first fish. So that's a bummer if I don't get that on camera. Whatever. Oh, there we go. A lot of trees in there. Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> Dude, the Alabama rig, I'm telling you, is a fish smoker. Which means there's fish up shallow eating shad. So that your crankbait should work. Bring it in here. Boom. A rig largey. I'm just waiting around to get a double. See you, bud. Oh, someone's calling me. The gear that I'm throwing this Alabama rig on is the Lose Super Duty 3 A rig rod with the Lose Pro TI and some 55 or 65 pound braid, I believe it is. I should throw it on mono, I just haven't had time to switch it out yet. Now I've just got five paddle tail swim baits on there. Catching donks. So with two fish caught, we're gonna finish with our fishing break. We're gonna go back to breaking in the engine. Now that we're in the second hour of breaking in the engine, we're not gonna go anything above 4,000 RPMs. And we're gonna alternate between anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000. I don't wanna run it straight at four or straight at 3,000, whatever. You're supposed to alternate the RPMs. So let's get going. So doing our part. We are back at the ramp. I have a dentist appointment that I gotta get to, but we took some dope photos. Look at that down there. Oh, beautiful. What are you doing? I didn't even see what he was doing. He was being a, being a goofball. That boat is gorgeous. But again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I got more content coming in this video. New little Q&A as soon as I get home, but it is noon and I've gotta go to a dentist appointment to clean my, my dentes, my teeth. You're good, you're good. Good stuff. We'll see you guys after my dentist appointment. Parkour! Oh, Skeeter parkour. 
We're here, Q&A, let's go. So to end this video, we're gonna do a little bit of an Instagram Q&A. If you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, what are you doing? Tyler's Real Fishing, same as my YouTube. And uh, occasionally I'll pop a thing on there saying, hey guys, ask me some questions for, uh, for a YouTube Q&A. And you guys definitely ask some good questions. So we're gonna take a few minutes to answer a few of y'all's questions, uh, both fishing and life related. So let's get started. First question comes from Hannah Collins 04. She says, do you remember opening the door on a girl in the bathroom near Sam Rayburn? Yes, I do remember that, Hannah. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed though. Happens to the best of us. What got me into fishing, says Jonathan W. Uh, it's a pretty broad question because there were several times in my life where I think fishing took a backseat to sports or to uh, music, that kind of thing. And so I think I got into fishing at several different times and at several different uh, capacities. So I think when I was really, really young, my grandpa, who passed away over a month ago, he taught me how to fish. He showed me the basics of catching bluegill and bass off the dock. But then it wasn't until I got to middle school that I joined a, a local you know, adult fishing club where those guys, those adults, kind of poured into me and taught me how to fish. And then I'd say Bassmaster Magazine and really following the Elite Series and the FLW Tour really taught me as well and moved me along as an angler. And then YouTube, I mean, I looked up to Fluke Master and John. I mean, they were the original, I mean, who else do we got? Tackle Junkie and, uh, I mean, I know Lake Fork I was around for a long time, so I watched them on YouTube and then decided over five years ago, you know what, I wanna make my own channel. So, that might have answered your question in a roundabout way, is, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different times that I got into fishing. So Colt Lebolt asks, where is one place in the United States that you haven't fished or been to that you would like to? Uh, now, in the United States, of course, that's comprising of, of Hawaii and Alaska. I do think I'd like to go to Hawaii just because of the pure beauty of the place. Uh, I'm more of a beach guy than a mountains guy, and so I think I'd fit well with the Hawaii vibe, the surfing, the skimboarding, and of course, the offshore fishing. But I have not been to upstate New York yet. Now, the, the key word there is yet. I will be traveling there for a college fishing tournament in June. So I will kind of cross off my list there, but I've heard the fishing in upstate New York at Oneida, Seneca, Cayuga, the St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario is just incredible. So I'll get up there very, very soon. Do I plan on getting my new boat wrapped? Yes, it will be wrapped as soon as physically possible. I'm talking with several wrap companies right now to determine uh, the best price and where I can get the wrap done at, and of course, the, the, the quickness and the speed of the wrap. I want to get it wrapped, I'd say within the first two weeks of January. Hopefully that's the case, because I have several contract deals with sponsors that are gonna be on the wrap, and you'll see more about that later. A question that I get all the time is, what is my PB bass? All you guys have to do is search on YouTube, Tyler's Real Fishing PB, or click the link down below, or click the link up here, and you guys can see the video where I caught my biggest bass of my life. Brandon asks, when is the full boat tour coming out? It'll come out probably in the next month or so. I'm hoping to get it wrapped, then shove all of my fishing gear in it, then get everything organized, and then before my first tournament, do a, a big, you know, deep run through of the Skeeter boat, including all of my settings for electronics, that kind of thing. It is probably gonna be a long video, but I wanna show you guys every intricate detail of, of this boat, and I'm just not quite there yet. Of course, I've been in this thing for a total of one day, and so I don't know the intricacies of this boat, and I, I don't want to make a video without being fully knowledgeable of the boat that I just purchased, so stay tuned. Justin Armand, Armand de, de Plata? Justin Armando Plata, there we go. Justina Plata, Plata asks, what would I do if I died? Um, I don't know, I, I'd be dead. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd go to heaven, if that's, I think that's the answer you're looking for, I'd be up partying with Jesus, man. I'd be talking to Paul about all the crazy adventures he went on, it'd be a great time. After I finish college, will I still do YouTube, asks Pat606, yes. YouTube is going to be my full-time job for the time being. Of course, sponsors, sponsored videos, and of course the sponsors that I work with, like AFCO, Luz, Lucky Tackle Box, Skeeter, that is what helps to pay more of the bills than the YouTube side does. You guys know that YouTube money is not exactly the best, but the more videos you guys watch and the longer you watch them, the better it helps out my channel. So if you guys can do me a favor and always like videos, always watch them to the full extent if you guys can, and uh, turning on those post notifications really helps the channel. But no, uh, you know, YouTube is technically my job, but representing sponsors in a larger form uh, is really what my job consists of. I've gotten a few questions about Texas A&M. I've gotten what major am I at Texas A&M uh, and what originally made me choose to go there. And I'll choose the originally choose to go there question first. I didn't really have A&M in mind. I grew up in Austin, so I kind of grew up a Longhorn fan. Uh, I know. And then I went to Baylor games because my sisters both went to Baylor. So I was a big RG3 fan, uh, especially big Art Bryles fan. And, you know, I love sports, if you can't tell. And so A&M wasn't really a thought of mine until I took a tour and I saw the traditions, uh, the community there, the people, and you truly get the full college experience going to A&M. I can't explain what A&M is like because you have to go there and experience it for yourself. 
Um, of course, A&M should be paying me by now. I talk so much good things about the school because it's true. I love my school and I love where I go to college. Uh, so that's what originally made me choose to go there is the tour that I took. Uh, and of course, tuition was cheaper and I have to pay for my own college. So <laughs> wasn't about to rack up $100,000 in student debt for Baylor. And my major is telecommunications with a minor in graphic design. It is the closest dang thing that I can get to what I do now. Uh, I was in the business school studying marketing and I just didn't feel like it really fit with what I do on the social media side. So I got the closest major I could. R Perot02 asks, what is the best way to get into college fishing? The best way, I made a 30 minute video about it. So make sure you click the link. It'll be linked down in the video description about college fishing. And if you're interested in high school fishing as well, that link will be in the description as well. Wyatt asks, how deep is a skier to live well? <sighs> Pretty dang deep. And we'll see you guys next time. I don't exactly know what next episode is going to consist of, whether it's going to be fly fishing, whether it's going to be hanging out with the girlfriend, catching some bass, but we'll see you guys then.